Welcome to the Cloudless Mind podcast about neuroscience and non-duality. Welcome back to the Cloudless Mind podcast. Paul and I are back today with another topic that we find quite interesting and a uh, applies to most people on the planet, if not everyone. <laughs> and we feel like, uh, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> yeah. And, and so today we're going to discuss a, um, a topic called sexual selection. Yes. And, and, and I brought this uh, up as a topic for Paul and I to discuss because many years ago, I uh, discovered Paul giving a talk online and it was an incredibly useful talk about this idea of sexual selection. And it got solidified the other night uh, about wanting to have this podcast. And this is a really, this is just a coincidence. I'm in my bathroom and I open up a drawer. And in the drawer, I pick up this thing and I look at it and it's a package of, of false eyelashes. Oh yeah. And I said, and I really didn't, I was like, what, what the hell is this? And it, you know, I kind of knew, but I didn't know. I was like, is someone, is there a costume party or something? Anyway, I looked at my wife and she says, sexual selection. And then she walked out of the room. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I thought, all right, this is a great topic here because of the, uh, the sign I was given from the universe here today. So yeah. anyway, I that, thought that was, that was quite interesting. That, 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 because I, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, who would actually put those things on their eyes? And she doesn't wear them. It, it turned out to be a, a costume thing for my daughter. Oh, okay. okay. But, but it, it was interesting to think that, you know, women, I've found out since then that this is quite common. It shows how um, ignorant I am to these things. So anyway... That's how we'll start this today. So, uh, so Paul, yeah. let me let me ask you just a, a quick upfront question. Sexual selection. What does it mean to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a uh, part of our daily routines, even though we're fully unaware of it most often. Um, so, the evolution contains two aspects. As one is the natural selection, which most of us are familiar with. Mm -hmm. So, there are mutations and those who are the best adapted to the environment, they survive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but then the other part, it also goes for the animal world, it's sexual selection. That means we do all kinds of things to impress uh, other people to get a good partner. So, the most... Uh, obvious uh, example about sexual selection is the peacock so it shows all its beautiful feathers and what the peacock actually means uh, unconsciously <laughs> is like look at me even with with having this extraordinary huge tail i still can survive mm. so i'm very fit and i'm very strong so what they did they did cut in half all those feathers <laughs> and then that season this peacock is single <laughs> <laughs> so what well, that goes for the peacock and what we do we put on our suit with a tie or we build up status or buy a big car a big house we want to become famous or we wear makeup or there are thousands and thousands of examples about what we do to impress other people almost a hundred percent of what we do is around that yeah right i mean it really is it's 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 when you really sort of you know, sometimes I'll call this free base it down to the to the absolute minimum of what we're up to. We're, we're really in the world to impress others, based again back on our savannah brain, right? Based on the That's so true. Based yeah. on based on based on survival instincts, and it's really a fascinating topic now because if we were to look at it, we would see that that. So much of we do everything from, you know, the types of conversations we have, how we'll act in a conversation, you know, how we might fib on something in order to keep keep us at a certain status level. I mean, there's so many different areas that this comes about that it isn't looked at. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm quite curious about it, too, as it relates to, you know, males and and uh, well, male and female, but how this translate f translates from like an aggressiveness standpoint. Do you have anything to talk about around that? So sexual selection, like you said, is everywhere. Even us uh, recording this podcast, uh, we could have done a million things, but we're doing this. And actually what we're doing, we're showing other people, and uh, mostly women, like, look how intelligent we are. And we, we have got so much energy 
we've got our income, we've got food and shelter, and even then we've got energy left to uh, be talking about stuff like this. So we're showing mm -hmm. um, to the women like we're the perfect uh, partner for you. What we would say is like we just like doing it. Throughout evolution, we started to like things that were beneficial for the sexual selection. So we, you and I, we play the guitar and we just say we love playing the guitar. But actually, at a biological level, we're playing the guitar to impress women. Right. And it's so it's it's basically a thread that's running through everything. Now, how do you see, um, you know, when we when we've like moved, I'm just curious as how you might look at this whole kind of like the Me Too movement, all the different things. I'm not sure how prevalent that is over there in, in Europe. Oh, yeah, it's very famous here. Is it? Is it? Yeah. yeah you know, what, yeah. what we're working with is a biological imperative that's sitting there that's beneath all that we're up to. And now what we've done is we've, we've taken it, we've made it into a meme to some degree without really looking at some of the fundamental aspects of it, right? You know, so I'm curious how you might see all of that and how it's being spoken about in, in your world over there. Yeah, so what you see that, especially when uh, men, they get a little bit of power, then the amount of testosterone increases, this, their sensitivity decreases. So, and their behavior is mostly not that appropriate. So they start to misuse their power. So in a way, it is a good sign that now people have social media to speak up. On the other hand, it has become quite extreme but that's a normal reaction. Like you always see, it will balance out later on in a few years. So now it's very extreme. Now you can't even flirt anymore <laughs> because it's dangerous. And I think we've gone too far with that. On the other hand, it's just a phase. So in a few years, it will be more balanced. Ah, so, so basically what you're saying is, is that, that I know, by the way, this was the same... This is the same um, kind of pattern that we saw in the Savannah brain, right? In, 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 back in the Savannah. Yeah, but it was different then because then there was always this social pressure. So you would be living in groups of approximately 150 people. And if a leader was always visible, so if a leader would misuse the, its, uh, his power, then that's what they call, there was a stop, which is a strategy to overcome the powerful. Hmm. So if the leader would show inappropriate behavior, people would simply stop following him and that would be the end of the leadership. Mm. But now these days, we don't have these stops anymore uh, because everything has become so complex in society. And now leaders can um, misbehave themselves without people stopping uh, to follow them. I'm interested. This is a lot. I see a lot of this in my world. I deal with this in, in some shape or fashion with a lot of my clientele. It's, it's, it's um, you know, you just described it. it. As the power arises, it's seemingly there's more of this testosterone energy, which drives all these different activities, but they don't have that, that, that ability, like you said, the stop. And I use a, I, I'll sometimes use like what, what you talked about with the complexity from a Trump standpoint, you know, there was that big thing where he had grabbed this woman in the, in the, in the groin. And, you know, in the past, like on the Savannah, that would have been filtered out almost immediately. Right. Yeah. But now with the in, tremendous amount of complexity, that it's hard to even, comprehend what he did because there's so much other stuff coming out. Is that what you would see as the, you know, kind of the, the thing that's driving a lot of this new narrative? Exactly. And because we uh, don't have these stops anymore, they can just continue. And because ev people are even afraid to stop those people because that would be have a negative side effect uh, to themselves. Ah, talk about that. So, for instance, if uh, you are my leader and I'm following you and I see that you misbehave and i think yeah but once i say something about it that will have a negative effect on my career because you've got so much power you can do anything also with my career so i will just say nothing shut up and just continue um agreeing with what you do so um therefore it, it's like the, the what's the website the glass house of the glass door right glass door Glass door, the glass yeah. door. Uh -huh. and I think because uh, uh, you showed it to me that's correct me if I'm wrong but that's a platform where people can just write anything about their company and their leaders right 
Yes. Yeah. And their experience, typically it's done. Well, it could be any time, but a lot of times you'll see it when people leave a company, they'll leave some type of comment on what their experience was at the company. Oh yeah. Okay. So, so, but that's like a platform for instance, so people can speak up actually. Then mm -hmm. most probably it will be a, a lot of negativity because the most extreme people with emotions will go to that website. Mm -hmm. Um, but but anyway, that this this is the risk of uh, today's society. That that especially men with power, they're really tricky. And this also goes for us. If if we're standing in front of a group doing a talk, then yes. the same thing happens. I've done talks, and then women fall in love with you uh, because you've got the high status. You're mm -hmm. the alpha male suddenly in the room, and that's why also a lot of gurus they end up uh, sleeping with their followers. Yeah, and and why you see a lot of leaders when they when they gather their status over time, you know they'll they'll get this the way they occur to the people that that follow them, and that's when they get into a lot of trouble around there because not only they heightened uh, you know s sexual hormones and all of that, that coupled with some adoring you know adoring fans, which are yes. employees, is a is yes. a really you know and and I think um, you know I wanted to bring full circle you know the usefulness of this conversation because yeah it might be interesting and we c can philosophize a little bit about this, but when when thinking about this idea of sex sexual selection as it as it pertains to leadership and and you know the world that we're in how do you see this as a useful conversation or do you or do you feel that it, the conversations you've had around this you know it's kind of a standoff standoffish you know a little taboo to, to even go there oh no i just talk about this all the time it's not a very popular topic because people want to perceive themselves as something amazing <laughs> and if i reduce that to just biological systems then uh, <laughs> it's not really a popular thing <laughs> Uh, but it's it's. I think it's really important <laughs> to understand this because, uh, for instance, if a leader is married to a strong wife, then the wife will always criticize him, so he will start acting in a more humble way. But then what happens? Often the leaders they divorce their wives and they take a younger girlfriend, and the younger girlfriend just looks up to the guy, doesn't criticize the guy, and that's when the danger begins. So you just need people in your environment to sometimes say, hey, hey, take a few steps back and have some uh, self-reflection here. Well, I think both you and I, you know, we, we recognize that out in the world, right? You know, um, you know, I'm married, been married almost for 25 years. You're single at this no, point. No. But we both... I a, girl, a girlfriend that? since last week. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> but this is interesting, like, Scott. There is this app, you've got all kinds of app, Tinder, Happen and stuff, and that's pure sexual selection. First of all, you look at the photo and to see is this partner fit, and, and for uh, women it's, it's uh, important that the man has got some status, that he's intelligent, uh, some humor, uh, respected, ambitious, because the man has to take care of their family, that's... Yes. The, underlying motive there and and men mostly look at a beauty so is her face symmetrical and is a smooth skin etc etc mm. so women will emphasize their beauty and men will emphasize their status and that's what you see in all these apps so and then you go through that and then it's, it's pure sexual selection there mm. Mm. well since I, I don't really know much about that these days, and maybe you're more familiar with that, um, but I am I am actually familiar. You may or may not have this over here. So I was doing some research with a, just a hedge fund group out in Silicon Valley here, and I was really interested to hear a conversation that was very interesting to them. It was an app called Seeking Arrangements. Have you ever heard of that before? Uh, no, no, no. Well, I, have, I hadn't either, um, but it's a sugar daddy app. <laughs> Who came up with such a brilliant plan? <laughs> well, it was. It was an app, and, and what they, and this hedge fund, <laughs> these, 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 these managers, they were talking about this is, is an, a tremendous growth space and a whole new business model. Meaning, you know, for those of you who don't know, sugar daddy or sugar mamas, where someone offers out their... Um, offers money for someone to take care of them, you know, possibly pay for for schooling or it could be bills or whatever, along with the the idea that they will exchange sexual yeah. um, communication yeah. and whatever that looks like. 
And um, but the the fascinating thing was that this hedge fund and a couple of them have really been focusing on this as, a, as an enormous growth area as the economy starts to change throughout the world. And you have this new dynamic where people are getting actually more comfortable with being in their sexuality, meaning they're saying, look, I've got an asset here. I'm willing to trade that for something that you need. And, and uh, th- the way they were speaking about it was really fascinating. Yeah. And apparently these sites are going insane. Yes. Um, I'm still behind them a little bit, but, you know, you, you probably, it probably makes some sense. And what's happening is this whole sexual selection thing is now actually turning into a out-in-the-world business. Uh, yeah, and in a way, marriage is the same. It's just yes. a, a more uh, subtle way <laughs> to not talk about it, so uh, obviously. Just if we look at it from a biological standpoint, th- that's the basis. And even falling in love with someone is an evolutionary uh, purpose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that, as a matter of fact, we were just talking about this since you've got a new relationship in, in the world and there's a new energy around it and there's a purpose for that, right? It, it sort of... It, it it drives you towards a relationship that that could be enduring, right? Is that is that your understanding of that? Yes, yes. So what the brain does, it gives you so much dopamine and so little serotonin. <laughs> so you're totally focused on one thing, and you're less emotional balanced. Uh, so that's when you make uh, decisions. And when we lived on the savanna, uh, within one year you would have reproduced yourself. And have have children. So still these days, you will fall in love for the maximum of of approximately one year. Mm. And then the dopamine decreases against serotonin goes up again. And that's when you have kids. You know, we can go into this at another time, but this also goes into the world of neuromarketing and, and, and some of the other business aspects that we talk about. And if we're awake to that, neuromarketers can certainly exploit this type of, and they do it constantly. Yeah, maybe we can do uh, continue the podcast on the same subject. Yes, let's do that. Well, this has been a, a really great conversation today, Paul. I think it's one that is uh, not very um, common in, in our world. So uh, thanks for engaging in that. And thank you for everybody for listening. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about us, we're at a cloudlessmind.com. We have a beautiful little book of the same name and... We thank you all for joining us.